Jenna. Sorry. One more time. I want the basketball hoop out of my shot. these again hey friend welcome back to my studio um so today slash this week all this week i am going to be doing a lot less colorful things a lot less painting um because i have a course launch next week so if you're not aware um i create a lot of online courses for creative business owners and next week my course pen to press opens again for registration it's a course for designing custom stationery, like wedding stationery, greeting cards, all of that, and like preparing it for print, digitizing, and all the client stuff. And I'm also, um, I have since like eight months ago, I've been working on a brand new course called Prep for Print that teaches artists how to prepare all their artwork, scan it, digitize, and prepare their files for printing, either in-house or outsourced, so sending it to a print shop. All of that's happening next week. The, the doors for launching both of those courses are open next week. So I am basically gonna be doing like a bunch of boring admin stuff this week, um, like writing emails, tweaking email sequences for my email list. We have thousands of people on my email list where it's really intricate, a lot of automations and workflows set up. And so when I'm you know, in the middle of a launch, I don't wanna blast off 10 emails to my entire list because not everybody is interested in on my online courses. And so we're writing emails, tweaking emails from last year's launch, and um, that's what I'll be doing this week. But whenever I have like a really heavy, um, like admin writing computer heavy week, I love to just set out a big sheet of watercolor paper with my watercolor supplies and in increments just kind of add painting to my day. So like 10 minutes or 15 minutes yesterday, I spent painting this little section of this big piece of watercolor paper and I'm gonna continue moving on across uh, this watercolor paper as the week goes on, just to break up, break up all of the like head and mind focused work that I'll be doing this week and next week when I'm actually launching the courses. So if you have a job that um, is like very computer heavy and you have the flexibility to also just lay out some watercolor paper and not have to tear it down every night, that to me is a really good way of like keeping the creative juices in flow and like taking a break from the computer. And every 90 minutes or so, I try to take a break from my computer. If I have phone calls or I have emails to write, or I'm doing something for the blog, or just something, or even digitizing watercolor, editing my watercolor pieces in Photoshop, or making repeating patterns in Illustrator. I always, every 90 minutes or so, try to take either a painting break, or a walk outside, or just sit in the sunshine, just to give my eyes a break, give my mind a break, and just to like, get back in my body again. Because I don't know about you guys, I don't. this might be an ADD thing. <laughs> But whenever I'm like writing emails or I was just designing a handout that we have in prep for print that I'm tweaking right now, um, and I, I get so hyper-focused. I think that's an ADD thing because like John just walked in the office and he was like, are you mad? And I'm like, no, I'm just like still in my mind, literally inside of Canva writing this handout. And I'm just so hyper-focused on that. It's hard for me to shift gears. So having little timers go off every 90 minutes or so, so that I can break up my day and kind of like get my, my mind out of my body. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. But if you're creative and you, you have the hyper-focus um, gene, then you might understand what I'm trying to say because it's so hard to like just plop back into life when you're like so hyper-focused on writing something.
So I started my art business as a wedding stationery designer. This was in 2013. And then probably around 2015, 16 is when things started to really pick up. I was getting busier and busier, um, making more money, but also feeling like, ah, what do I do? And then I met Michael Schwartz. So me and Michael had a little run in because I was speaking at a little local um, event for creative entrepreneurs. And uh, he was there and he owns a letterpress shop, a digital printing shop, just a all in one print shop business. And I was pumping out wedding invitations like a mad woman. And um, he approached me after my talk or actually one of his employees approached me after my talk and was like, hey, do you work with a print shop? And I was like, well, yes, but they're in Los Angeles, which was like an hour plus away drive for me. And I wanted to do more press checks and um, not have to pay so much for shipping if I couldn't pick it up. So anyway, um, I converted over to Czar Press. Um, I stopped working with the print company, printing company that I was working with in LA. And they were like 10 minutes from my house, maybe less. And so I could go there and check up on jobs, see how colors were coming out, or maybe I'd never seen or tried a paper before and I wanted to check it out, see if they had, if they were able to order it, um, all the different printing methods. So it was, a, it was a great and amazing relationship at the perfect time for my expanding wedding and custom stationery business. And also at that time, he wanted to take over the office right next door. And he was like, would you want to share an office space with me? All my letter presses, my digital printing machines, my paper cutters, all the things. Uh, we moved um, apartments or, or whatever, and also moved into, this was my first time having a separate office from my house. This was a huge moment in my career, but also a huge moment as a creative person because I could now have a space where I could basically have walls around office hours around as well, my client jobs and my work stuff. And then I could go home and I had walls around that kind of protected me from bringing in the work stuff into my home, physical, metaphorically, all of it. So um, I was able to see every single day how jobs at a print shop come through, uh, how letterpress machines work, how uh, paper cutters work, what supplies let, uh, print shops use to, you know, inkjet versus laser versus all of these different things and how they mix up and match Pantone uh, cards or swatches uh, for ink colors, for letterpress, how foil works and all the different sheets of actual foil that gets pressed and actually engraved into um paper or whatever it is you're printing on, how screen printing works. And then I also got to uh, sit next to Wiley Valentine, Rochelle and Emily, who are the like co-owners of Wiley Valentine. And they'd been doing stationery for, I think, 14 years at the time that I met them. And so they, and they had been working with celebrity clients and Lisa Vorse, which is like a really top notch, and Mindy Weiss is really top notch wedding uh, planner companies. Um, so I was able to like learn a lot from them, ask them questions like, Hey, have you ever done anything with a converted envelope or like a boxed invitation? Or how do you print? Can you print foil on wood or, you know, things that I didn't know at the time I was able to just literally turn around and ask them or go over to Michael and say, Hey, have you ever printed on wood? Or, um, you know, what's the best printing method for printing on wood? Oh, screen printing is probably the best or whatever. Anyway, all of that stuff is poured into my course, Pen to Press, which is for stationary designers. And then I started noticing through my audience that there's a lot of people, maybe this, this is you, who aren't really interested in designing wedding stationery, but they do have art that they maybe have an online shop like through Shopify or Etsy or something like that where they do wanna make or create prints of their own artwork, either with their own printer at home or uh, outsourcing it at a place like Czar Press. And they have no clue uh, how to even scan in their artwork, how to edit their artwork in Photoshop or Illustrator, and then also how to send files to a printer and what they are expecting of a designer or an artist when um, they're sending files, like do we have crop marks bleeds, um, Pantone numbers, hex codes, all of these things that most artists when they're getting started have no clue because you didn't go to design school. You're also not a letterpress or digital printer. So anyways, I created Prep for Print and 
next week, it becomes available to the world. And it's a mini but mighty course of mine, so it's not a huge investment. Um, and it's like basically the quick answers to here's how to scan your work, digitize your work, prepare the files for print, send it to a print shop, or what tools to use if you want to use it or print your work in your own studio, in your own house or whatever. So anyways, I'm rambling about this course now and about printing because it's obviously on my mind uh, as of late. It launches next week. And so there's a lot to be done and I should probably stop talking now and get to work. Oh yes, and also, oh yes. Also this week I have upcoming on, on? Not a word. <laughs> and and on. On Thursday this week, I have a Patreon live. I've been doing Patreon now for about a year. And uh, in the $10 tier and up, we have lo monthly live art classes. So I literally hop on live and I teach something and you guys who are part of that tier and up um, attend and ask me questions live and watch, either watch and paint along or just watch. I usually don't know. I like to go with my intuition. This might be totally um, out there or uh, different than some what some of you are maybe used to, but I kind of like to go off of my intuition where my intuition is leading me to teach and paint for the day for those specific students. Sometimes I'll ask people that are attending live if there's anything in particular that they had questions about or that they wanted to cover. Um, but for the most part, I sit with it and I before, like a few minutes before I actually go live and I am guided to a specific topic or a specific um, landscape or floral or whatever. And that ends up being really bomb. And I love doing it that way. Cause then people also get to see how a uh, artist um, approaches a subject that maybe they've never painted before or haven't practiced or anything like that. Usually it's been practiced um, and the approach of like how to look at a reference photo or a reference subject and putting it on paper and that just that whole mental process because anybody on YouTube can teach you for free the steps and the process for, you know, one, two, three, how to paint this peony or one, two, three, how to paint this seascape or whatever. But there's a lot more like research and color theory and relationships that goes on in the process or the mind of an artist before coming to the steps. And so I like that that teaches you all of that behind the scenes, kind of inside the mind, the inner world of an artist before just putting a brush on paper. So if you're interested in, in those art classes, obviously check out my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Jenna Rainey. Um, we'll link to it in this video. If you're interested, it's a good time. Another thing about Patreon is we are super excited to officially start May 1st, which is next Sunday from um, filming this, from the time of the filmings. Uh, May 1st, we start our actual art community for patrons only. I've never done an art community like this. A lot of artists have art communities in their courses or whatever, um, and I've never had an online art community that's like for asking questions, getting feedback, um, you know, answers from myself, but also people who are in the community who are either further along or maybe know the answers to specific questions. Uh, it's going to be great for building accountability with people inside the art community. And I've been a part of communities and courses like I've taken, or I'm currently taking a course on email marketing to help with a lot of automations and tweaks that we're doing in our own email list. And there's a really big community, a part of this course. And um, it's just a great place. Like you can see people making friends and like 
hey, do you want to work through the course with me? Or, um, oh my gosh, I'm also in Southern California. We should meet up for coffee sometime. So it's a really awesome thing that we're very excited to bring on to the Jenna Rainey uh, product portfolio. Um, but obviously to make it more like, you know, contact and people building relationships and getting actual feedback on their work or answers to their questions. I'm very, very excited. All right. I hope you enjoyed the peek inside my studio this week, the vlog this week. Um, yep. Bye. Oh, the cat's in the yard. We have a huge Garfield sized cat that roams our yard. He's cute, but he poops a lot. I am not like that bird. There he is. He's, he's chubby, but he gets around just fine. We have no idea whose cat he is. <laughs> Comment below if you enjoyed this, or maybe there's something that you're curious about that you would like me to talk about, whether it's a part of my business um, or work stuff, style, work style, batch working, um, or it's a part of my art process or things that I am working on art related wise. Um, so if you're curious about anything, type it, use your little fingers and type away in the comments below and we'll bring it into a video. We're super new to this. Obviously this is our second one. Check out our first one if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and I love doing them. It's showing you inside the world of an artist, a professional artist with the business side, but also the creative process and what a day or a week looks like inside of my life. Um, and also still te major teaching moments. So I hope you love it. Again, comment below if you'd like to see anything in particular and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye now.